Good afternoon. Yes, I'm in the bath again. In my nice um, therapeutic space. Now, I wanted to um, talk about toxic behaviour um, and lies. Um, the people that I've had in my life, a lot of them have been compulsive liars. Um, just to hide their own toxicness and, and to try and twist stuff. Um, it, it's quite horrible. Uh, it's made me a, a good detective, though, um, having to work them all out, um, work out who's telling what, and it, it's just so many stuff, so much stuff that's gone on in my life with the lies. Um, it's been so th- many things that I've had to work out. But eventually, once you've learned the patterns, you... You start recognising certain traits, um, certain manipulations, um, certain triggers for them. Toxic people, um, when they've been triggered, they tend to do certain reactions. Um, Toxic, obviously, um, which always makes the situation worse. Um, This is why I found walking away from them is the best thing to do, because I'll just twist anything and everything that you say. Um, it doesn't matter if, no matter how much truth you tell them, they will twist it. They won't believe it. Um, yeah, they'll just undermine you and, and make you feel terrible. Um, guilt trip you into thinking it's your fault that you've done something wrong when it's them. Um, and then they, <laughs> they like to spread the lies too. Um, throughout families and friends um, I've experienced this quite a lot recently Um, well for all my life but quite a lot recently um, even though I've not been anywhere near my family um, they tend to still make lies up about me Um, it's just what they do it's just how they keep themselves occupied I suppose it's it's what their life revolves around um, causing havoc and Interfering, and when you try and step back from that, that's when the smear campaigns step in. Um, they tell people lies about you to try and convert your friends and other family members uh, over to their side, convert them over uh, into their their beliefs from what the truth actually is. Um, for instance, um, my mum, she's a good liar. Well, she, I won't say she's a good liar. She's she's good at lying, but she's just terrible at remembering the lies and um, backtracking and, and just cocking herself up, con- constantly contradicting herself. Um, her latest one that I know about from, about me um, happened a few years ago, actually. Um, she was caught uh, by her ex-husband um, messing around with somebody else online. And it wasn't the first time, like, um, and he got pissed off, obviously, and booted her out. Now, I heard through the grapevine um, that this had happened, so I've not spoken to them for years. So I decided to send my ex-father-in-law a a message, just to say sorry about what's happened. Um, Don't take it personally, this is the sort of person she is, and... You know, it's just something that she does. Now, there was a conversation from that, um, laughing and joking and, and, you know, as we used to be. Um, Him explaining a lot and me explaining a lot. um, And my mum took a very innocent conversation, personal conversation, but innocent, and twisted, twisted it around to make out that the reason that she'd left Andy, my stepdad, was because he was having an affair with me. Um, now, I, first of all, I've been abused as a, by family many, from, by family members as a kid. It's not something that I would do. Um, I class him as family. And it just would be so traumatic for me to even go there. Um, she can't sort of like comprehend this. Um, but it was all a ruse 
to deflect the attention off her and put it on to me. Um, basically, she'd seen this this message, this conversation between me and him. Obviously, <laughs> I was in a different frame of mind, so I was slagging her off, as you do when you're bitter and, you know, you're angry, um, being triggered to see that she's hurt somebody else again, like, you know, and it's her old tricks again. It did trigger me, so, yeah, I was slagging her off in this and that was her retaliation for that dragging my name through mud she told the family she posted it all over facebook um and this is while i had it blocked um i didn't even know this was going on um it was my daughter that informed me um that she'd been posting stuff all over facebook and thank god my daughter stood up for me um, but the rest of the family, they all believe that I've been shagging about with my stepdad. It, 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 the thought of it just makes me sick. It repulses me. Uh, it's, it's just something that I've... Never in a million years, you know, it's, 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 it's the trauma. There's too much trauma behind that sort of thing. Um, even though he's, he's only a stepdad, he's still a member of my family. He's still a father figure, you know. It's it's not going to happen, never going to happen. Um, in fact, he did try it on with me, and I've never spoken to him since. Um, his excuse for coming on to me was to sleep with him to get over my child abuse. Um, which, yeah, he, no, that's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. And that's another toxic um, behaviour pattern. Um, trying to convince you that... <laughs> the power to my being healed is all through sex with him. You know, it's it's just sick. It really is sick. And this is why I don't associate myself with these people anymore. I, I won't give them the time of day. Um, I mean, my mum apparently is is suffering from leukemia at the moment. Um, or for for however long, I don't know. I mean, she's made up so many different stories of being poorly and this, that, and the other. You don't know what to believe. You know, you cry wolf. You know. Um, until I see proof, then, you know, physical proof from the doctors, then I'm not going to believe it. Um, because this is this is how bad she lies about things. Um, she'll lie when there's no need to lie. It's all to protect herself, you know, and to keep control over the situation. Um, she lie after lie after lie. But, yeah, um, just because it's a family member or somebody that you love... Um, don't think that they can't twist things um, for their own benefit. Um, I found that a hell of a lot out um, through my family and through ex-partners and through ex-friends. Um, <laughs> you put your trust in these people because you think that they love you. And, oh, that's not love. That really is not love. Um, it's a twisted version of what they think love is. Um, but it, it all stems down to their own mental illnesses, mental instabilities, um, whatever they may be, you know. I'm not a psychiatrist, I can't diagnose that, but I can see the patterns and I can see um, their actions and I can make my own assumptions up from them because the patterns have been going on for so many years, you just can't deny it, it's it's all there. It's like people who know me, you know, who really know me, they, they don't believe any of this shit because they know that it's not true. And they understand these other people, toxic people. And the more that other people understand them, the better it's going to be. Um, people like me, Johnny, whoever else has been through domestic violence, their voice is going to get heard. And it's about time. Um, it's been hidden through the media, through the police system, through the court system, through families, through friends, through acquaintances, through jobs, through through every aspect of life, it's been hidden. The abuse, child abuse, sexual abuse, mental abuse, um, abuse against the vulnerable, you know? Um, it's about time it was all put out into the open and stopped because it, it causes so much damage mentally to people, which in turn then physically, you know, people get suicidal, would take their own lives. Or on the other aspect, partners will get that outrage that they kill the, the partner that that's trying to escape from domestic violence, you know? It's horrible. And it needs to be stopped. And the only way to stop it is for people to speak out about it, um, speak up against it. Um, 
and I thank you for all of you that are speaking up against domestic violence and abuse in all forms. It's it's causing so much damage. I mean, the mental health system is at breaking point as it is, you know. It takes months and months for somebody that needs desperate help to even be, to have anybody speak to them, you know, to see a psychiatrist or or even a doctor in that sort of field. Um, there's been times I've, I've had to wait over a year to get therapy, you know, and it's, it's disheartening, you know. When you're feeling suicidal, you need that help instantly because in that moment you want to kill yourself and it's not oh I'll just wait a year you know and <laughs> you've got a year of trauma all that all that trauma all that overthinking over that self-hate a year of it just having to stew in that situation trying to be brave trying to be strong trying to take every day as it comes but it, it's so difficult because you, you're just trapped in darkness. It, re it really is horrible. And to see people actually, myself, coming out of that situation from rock bottom, rock bottom, and so many suicide attempts, and actually enjoying life and seeing a future, even making a bucket list, <laughs> you know, never had that. Um, I, I, I never saw a future. Um, but this was all down to the abuse that I was going through. And through my years of development and through, through the years of, of trauma, this is what has developed my mental illnesses. You know, it's not something that I was born with. Um, I may have some sort of traits in the family. I've, I've not really gone into that side of things. I, I suppose I, it would be a good idea. And yeah, But I, I already know that the family's got um, traits of mental illness, you know. Um, but a, a lot of mine have developed through the trauma. Um, there's certain um, mental illnesses that I've developed through childhood. Um, and they only developed through childhood through traumatic events. You know, there's no mistake in that. Um, and my family don't seem to get that into their heads. They just dismiss it and tell me that I'm crazy, I'm a druggie, and, you know, I'm an alcoholic, and, you know, I'm just off my head, you know. <laughs> Uh, no, <laughs> I think I'm the sanest one in the family, really, um, considering. I know they've all got their own individual mental illnesses. Um, some don't realise, some sort of do. Um, yeah, so it's just brilliant that people are actually standing up about the liars and the manipulators. And hopefully with this channel, I'll be able to show you... Um, different ways to recognise um, the toxic in people and also recognise maybe even, I mean it's like I've even got toxic traits, um, you know letting people walk over me and things like that, I mean there's those sorts of toxic traits that maybe you don't even know in yourself, um, I'd like to, to point those out so people can recognise them in themselves and see a way to move forward and, and cope with them on a daily basis instead of just sat there wondering what the hell's going on, you know? Because that's how it sends you. It sends you crazy just wondering what the hell's going on. But, um, yes, thank you, everybody, for subscribing, liking, watching, um, commenting um, about your own experiences. You're so brave um, brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Bye-bye.